The Turch Troith, a nobleman transformed into a giant boar, is one of the more prominent characters in Welsh myth. In the tale of Cilwch and Dolwen, he is hunted by Arthur and his men, but not even these great heroes can vanquish this most terrible of enchanted beasts. So why is the Turch Troith so impossible to kill? Hello, my name is Gwilym Morris Baird, and this is Celtic Source. The story of Turch Truith is one of the tales contained in the medieval Welsh classic Cilwch and Dolwen that was probably written down sometime in the 12th century. But like other medieval Welsh texts, it's quite likely that many of the episodes in Cilwch and Dolwen, including the hunting of Turch Truith, are drawn from a much older oral tradition. This traditional material was part of the native culture of Britain, and the anonymous author of Cilwch and Dolwen clearly found some of the more pagan elements of this culture distasteful, resulting in some part of the tale being altered to fit with a more Christian worldview. This is clearly the case with the story of the Turch Truith. According to the anonymous author of Cilwch and Dolwen, the Turch is a prince transformed into a giant boar as a punishment by God. But humans transforming into animals is so common in Celtic myth that this idea probably has its origins in the non-Christian culture of Britain. It's not that there are no animals or animal transformations in the Bible, but the relationship between humans and animals, as described by Christianity, is not a positive one. And the whole notion that men are beasts is really a way of saying how sinful humanity is. But in most Celtic myths, the attitude is different, animal transformation almost always suggesting the presence of magic and not necessarily that of sin. Many of the animal transformations that we find in Celtic myths could well have developed out of an earlier belief in reincarnation or transmigration of the soul. Some of these medieval tales suggest the theme of the soul's journey, such as the story of Aideen in Irish myth or that of Llei in Welsh. But how does humans reincarnating as animals fit into the overall narrative of Cilwch and Dolwen? Well, it's basically a story about a young nobleman, Cilwch, who is destined to love no one but the beautiful Olwen. But he must first of all ask her monstrous father, the giant Aspadaden, for her hand in marriage. The problem is, just as Cilwch is destined to love Olwen, Aspadaden is likewise destined to die should his daughter ever marry. When Cilwch arrives in Aspadaden's castle to ask him for Olwen's hand in marriage, Aspadaden sets him a series of impossible tasks to accomplish before the marriage to try and put the young nobleman off. Several of Cilwch's impossible tasks involve cutting Aspadaden's beard, which is so tangled and matted that many strange and magical items are required to make him look presentable for his daughter's wedding. Kiluch must retrieve a special comb and shears that have the power to cut Aspadaden's dreadful beard, and the all-powerful comb and shears just happen to be lodged between the ears of the great boar Turch Truith. As Shona Davis explains in her edition of the Mabinogion, the cutting of hair was a symbolic act by means of which a blood relationship was recognised and accepted. Basically, when someone was accepted into a family and given all the rights and privileges of being a member of that family, they would have their hair cut, just as with Kiluch at the very beginning of the tale. After being allowed into Arthur's court, Kiluch says, I want to have my hair trimmed, said Kiluch. You shall have that, replied Arthur. Arthur took a golden comb and shears with loops of silver and combed his hair and asked who he was. Arthur said, My heart warms towards you. I know you are of my blood. Tell me who you are. Just as Kiluch is acknowledged as a member of Arthur's family by having his hair cut, with the union of Kiluch and Dolwen, Aspadaden will likewise be acknowledged as a member of the same family by having his beard cut. But the marriage of his daughter Olwen is also the very thing that brings about his death. So the act of cutting Aspadaden's beard is also the moment of his demise. And cow of Pradin came to shave off Asbadaden's beard, flesh and skin to the bone, and both ears completely. And Kiluch said, Have you been shaved, man? 
I have, he replied. And is your daughter now mine? Yours, he replied. And you need not thank me for that, but thank Arthur, the man who arranged it for you. If I'd had my way, you never would have got her. And it is high time to take away my life. And then Gorai, son of Kostenin, grabbed him by the hair and dragged him to the mound and cut off his head and stuck it on the bailey post. In many ways, Kiluch and Olwen is the story of a new, civilised aristocracy, represented by Kiluch and Arthur, replacing an older, barbarous aristocracy, represented by Espadaden. In that sense, the old aristocracy dies in Espadaden, but is reborn through Kiluch. But what does this all have to do with the Turch Truith? Well, the Turch Truith can easily be read as a symbol of that transformation from old to new. Not only is the Turch himself a nobleman transformed into a giant boar, but he also carries between his ears the very tools of transforming the nobility, the special comb and shears that change Kiluch from being an outsider into an acknowledged member of Arthur's family, and that change Espadaden from being an evil adversary to being a dead enemy. The Turch Truith is an agent of violent transformation, his appearance in the tale used to signal the entry of transformative and revolutionary powers in the land. Kiluch is destined, through his love of Olwen, to challenge the old power of Espadaden and bring him down. What better avatar of that violent act than the great royal boar who ravages the land with merciless intensity? It's important to remember that aggression and violence weren't frowned upon in medieval Welsh culture. Far from it, they were celebrated as the defining features of great and worthy heroes. At times, the Welsh bards praised their warrior patrons by comparing them with boars, and sometimes even the Turch Truith himself was used as a praiseworthy comparison. Kiluch and Olwen is a story that draws on older ideas about reincarnation, not only the reincarnation of noblemen as powerful enchanted beasts, but also the reincarnation of a particular type of power in each generation, of aristocracy being reborn in the young as it dies in the old. This cycle would have appeared inevitable to the warrior elite of ancient Europe. There was always a need for the Turch Truith and his ceremonial comb and shears to mark the often violent transformation of the old into the new. Is this why the Turch doesn't actually die in the hunt, simply vanishing into the sea off Cornwall? What do you think? Is this just a convoluted interpretation of a simple wonder tale? Or is there some symbolic significance to the Turch Truith and his role in the story of Kiluch and Olwen? As always, let me know in the comment section below. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and share, and if you'd like to see more, please subscribe and click the bell. Dilchem Auream.